What's going on, everybody? David here, back with another video. So today we're going to take a look at the polls. So we have the election tomorrow. So make sure you guys go out and vote. And uh, we're going to take a look at the presidential polls. And then we're going to talk a little bit about who do you think would give us a larger stimulus, President Trump or Joe Biden? So that's what we're going to talk about. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please hit the like button. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification. That way you'll get notified anytime we put out a video. All right. So we're going to flip over to my desktop here. So we're going to take a look at Real Clear Politics. The reason that I like to look at Real Clear Politics is because they average all the polls. And so it gives us a, a good indicator of what's going on because they will average the polls out. And so you might look at one poll and say, oh, he's up, uh, Joe Biden's up by 10, and then look at another poll and Joe Biden is up by one. So they'll do an average of that and then they'll give you the overall number. Uh, so let's take a look. I want to dive in a little bit deeper today. And so if we're looking at right here where the yellow line is, you see the plus 6.8. That is Joe Biden. So he's up 6.8. That's real clear politics. So that is their poll, their average of all the polls. Uh, so it gives you a pretty good indicator. Now he's been around 6.8, 6.7, up to about nine, uh, plus nine. So he's been in, in that area. So he hasn't, uh, I think he went into double digits as an average once. And that was uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. But uh, he's he's been around this this um, range the whole time. So if you're looking, the first thing you want to look at is these are all the major polls, the, the most recent polls that are out there. We're going to take a look at which uh, polls they are in, in a second. Uh, but just looking at all the blue here, you have Biden up in every poll. So the way that I look at this, if every poll is showing Biden up, then Biden has the lead at this point when it comes to the polls, and that's that's just the way it is. Uh, even when when Trump wasn't up in, in a lot of the polls in 2016, he was still up in some polls. Rasmussen had him up. So, uh, and right here, Rasmussen, here's Rasmussen here, and we're looking at, this is the important stuff. So we have Rasmussen, and we want to see LV. LV is likely voters, so 1,500 likely voters. Margin of error is 2.5, and we're looking at Biden at plus one. So he's within that margin of error. Uh, so that's pretty much a tie, uh, basically, is, is the way they look at it. So they're looking at Rasmussen is looking at the race as a tie. Uh, Quinnipiac up above there, likely voters 15, uh, 1,516, margin of error 2.5. And we're looking at Biden plus 11. Now, you see the big fluctuation there. So who's going to be right? We'll find out tomorrow. Now, looking at some of the other polls, I just want to go through. Now, one of the polls you don't want to look at is right here. So the NBC News poll, the Wall Street Journal poll, that was just done. Thousand registered voters. We want likely voters. We don't want registered voters because likely voters are the people who are going to go out and vote. Registered voters are just people who are registered. So they might not be voting. Uh, but looking at that within the margin of error, 3.4, and Biden is up a plus 10 there. So uh, looking at pretty much everything, and then even when you look at the, the, the graph here, you can, you can kind of see the red is Trump, the blue is Biden, and you see Trump is starting to rise just a little bit. Biden's coming down just a little bit. Uh, so... Uh, that that's pretty interesting and you saw it just refresh as we were doing this so it just refreshed and dropped down a point so it's a plus 6.7 instead of plus 6.8 and it will refresh it will continue to refresh so that means that uh, they, they got some new polling in which am i seeing that polling i don't think i see the polling on here uh yeah actually is it the oh well, is it the yougov poll it might be i don't know if i don't know what poll that was maybe it's a yougov poll that just came in they actually move things around now, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but nonetheless, yes, we're still looking at 6.7. Uh, so the lead is is primarily primarily the same uh, for Biden. Now let's let's look at some of the battleground states because this is what's important. A lot of people are focused on the national polls, but realistically, you want to look at some of these battleground states because some of these battleground states alone can determine the the race who wins so looking at florida that's what we're going to look at first so florida here you have two 
two uh, polls. We have Quinnipiac and we have Reuters. And uh, both polls are showing Biden up. Biden plus five, Biden plus four. Now, this is important because if Florida goes to Biden, then Trump, it, 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 it's pretty much, the, it's game over. If if Biden can win Florida, he's going to win the election. And so that's why they're spending a lot of time in Florida, and they're, they're focused on Florida and Pennsylvania. Those are two key states. Uh, so let's look at Pennsylvania. So looking at Pennsylvania, uh, we're looking at, uh, let's see, Trump is plus one and in one poll, and then we have Biden plus five in that NBC poll, and then Trump is plus two uh, in another poll. And then we have Biden in the, the last two polls there. So if you're just looking at polls, overall, Biden has three polls that he's favored in, and Trump has two polls. Now, this plus one, the plus two, the Trump has plus one, and, and Trump has plus two, that's within the margin of error. Uh, plus, uh, plus three for Biden is probably within the margin of error as well. Uh, they don't show it on here, so I would have to look in deeper, but... Uh, those are those are pretty close. So when any time you see it, plus one, plus two, plus three, most of the time that's within the margin of error, uh, which means it's it's a dead heat, which means it's a tie. All right. So looking at some of the other polls, Georgia, believe it or not, Georgia is is one of these states that is is leaning Trump, but in some polls they have it a dead heat, which is interesting because if Georgia goes to to Biden, that would be uh, the first time in a long time, I think the first time since I think Bill Clinton was the last uh, Democrat to win Georgia. All right. So let's look at some of the other polls here. North Carolina, Biden's plus one, which would be within the margin of error, which would probably be which would be a dead heat. But North Carolina, another state that doesn't always that usually goes uh, to the Republicans. Uh, so if uh, Biden can win that, uh, that would be good. Another state that goes to the Republicans, Arizona. So Arizona, we have two polls that are out, and we have a tie in one poll, and then Biden up uh, plus two. So pretty much they're both ties at this point. Ohio. Now, Biden is not expected to win Ohio, but let's see what the polls are saying. So you have Trump plus four, and then you have Biden plus four. So uh, Rasmussen and Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac has Biden plus four. So that kind of rounds it out. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that just to kind of set us up for what we'll be looking at when it comes to the election tomorrow. So remember, Florida, that's going to be the key state. If if Biden can win Florida, it, it's game over. Now, if Biden loses Florida, he still has ways to win. But uh, winning Florida because of the electoral votes, it would just put him over the top. And uh, you have you pretty much have the likely... Let's see, we can, let's let's pull this up, pull up our map. Okay, so here's the Electoral College map. And if we look up top here, you see 216 electoral votes are likely to go to Biden. And then you have 125 electoral votes that are likely to go to Trump. And then 197 are toss-up votes. So looking at the map here gives you a pretty good indicator of where we are. Now, some of these states, like, Nevada should go to the Democrats. Arizona is kind of a toss-up. Uh, Texas, Texas leans for for Trump, but it's still uh, it's going to be a close race. Uh, we have Pennsylvania, obviously that that's a battleground state. We have Michigan as a battleground state. Uh, looking at Florida, like I said, if if Biden can win Florida, that that will probably seal the deal uh, for for Biden if he can pull that out. And then Georgia, Georgia's a toss-up. North Carolina's a toss-up. So you see it's probably going to be a long night because we're going to have to, that's 197 electoral college votes that we're, we need to look at all those different states to see where things go when it comes down to it. Now, why is this important? Who do we think will provide a, a larger stimulus? Now, we've heard President Trump say, I want it larger than what the Democrats want. He, he's putting all this stuff out there. Uh, but the first thing we need to focus on, not just the the election as far as President Trump and Joe Biden, we also need to look at the Senate. Now, if you guys want to know more about the Senate, I posted a video yesterday. You can check it out up there why the Senate is important. So the Senate needs to turn blue in order for us to see our larger stimulus package. Now, this is my opinion, but 
when you're looking at the whole situation and we 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 have Mitch McConnell right now leading the Senate, we know where he wants to go with the stimulus package because he put two skinny bills in front of the Senate. And neither of those skinny bills had a stimulus check in there. So we know where they want to go. They want to go 500 billion, 300 billion around that area. They don't want to spend a lot of money. And that's not going to change if Mitch McConnell continues to be the leader. So what we need is we need to change that. And the only way we can change that is by turning the Senate blue. Now, if the Senate turns blue, when I say turns blue, I mean goes to the Democrats, then now you'll have a different leader. Uh, probably uh, Chuck Schumer will be the leader, but at least you'll have someone that's pushing for a larger number when it comes to a stimulus package. And we could be potentially in a situation, it doesn't even matter at that point who the president is, we could be in a situation where we can see a larger package. So looking at Trump, looking at Biden, when it comes down to it, I think, and this is my opinion, I think Biden would probably want a larger stimulus package. Even though Trump has said he wanted a larger stimulus package, he doesn't have the support when it comes to the senators, the G GOP senators. So I think if the Senate does turn blue, the Senate goes to the Democrats, then I think, and if Biden wins, that I think that Biden will be able to bring a larger stimulus because you're going to have Biden as a president, you're going to have the Senate run by Democrats and the House run by Democrats. And so whatever they want to get done, they can get done. So that's that's our best bet. Now, I don't care if you're a Democrat or you're a Republican. If you want a stimulus package, a large stimulus package, you're going to want it to be one-sided. That's the way you're going to want either Republican House, Republican Senate, Republican president, and then you'll have to probably go with the skinny bill or you're going to want a Democratic House, a Democratic Senate, Democratic president, and then you can get a larger package because that's that's the sides that, that, that we're on right now. We have one side that wants to spend more money on a stimulus package, the other side that wants to spend less money on the stimulus package. And even though President Trump was trying to bring it up, brought it up to $1.9 trillion, you still had Republicans in the Senate that weren't going to go along with that. So... In order for this to happen, we are going to need that that wave that they're talking about, a blue wave, in order for, for a larger stimulus package. That's what I think. What do you guys think? So let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.